Hello and welcome back to Football Index Moneyball. We have another pick of the day for you in what will be the last pick before the big announcement tomorrow. This could have a major effect on the market and will likely change some of the players I had lined up for videos. For today's pick, I've come up to what I would call the middle of the value end of the market with an unproven English talent who after a successful youth career at one of the most productive youth academies in England in the last decade or so, decided to take a chance on a move to Europe to try and find better first team opportunities. Now I'm sure you're all aware of another English youngster who tried this tactic pretty successfully and is now sitting pretty at the top of the index. So I think this player's situation has potential for profit, will be very interesting to watch over the next few seasons. Before we get going, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to follow me on Twitter, then you can search for at Index Moneyball and there are referral links in the description if you want to sign up for Football Index, Football Index Edge and Football Index Club. There's also a link to my Patreon page where you can help support the channel, which gives access to some bonus picks, portfolio reviews and other added benefits. So today's pick is Jonathan Panzo, a 19-year-old English centre-back who a year after finishing as runner-up and making the team of the tournament in the Under-17s European Championships and then going on to win the Under-17 World Cup with an England team that actually included Jadon Sancho, he left the Chelsea Academy for Monaco in the summer of 2018. Now the first thing that I like about this situation is that in terms of developing young players and giving them a chance at senior football, there's not many better clubs than Monaco. And the other thing I really like is that once they have developed these players, they tend to sell them on for big fees. Some recent examples include Martial, Bernardo Silva, Benjamin Mendy and Kylian Mbappe. And there's really a lot more if you have a look on the transfer mark page. Looking at his 12 month chart, you can see that he's currently 13p down from his peak price of 86p which he hit in August of last year, just before he was loaned out to Circle Bruges in Belgium. The rise would have been in anticipation of him breaking through to the first team at Monaco and seeing some PB eligible football, so the drop is understandable there. And I fully expect a similar rise at the start of next season, but this time the comparable prices have had 12 months growth, so I think it could go much higher. There is of course the risk of another non-PB league loan spell, but with another year of development and some senior football under his belt, the likelihood of him staying to fight for a place or even getting a PB league loan this time around are much higher. Taking a look at Panzo's transfer marked, you can see that he has the Under-17 World Cup along with a couple of English Youth League trophies from his time at Chelsea. He also got his first call up to the England Under-21s in August last year and has now featured for them three times. For his career stats so far, he has a total of 59 games with four assists and 17 of those appearances and one assist came this season in senior football in Belgium. For his positional stats, he's actually got a pretty good split of appearances between left back and centre back with 21 and 30 respectively. And of those 21 left back appearances, 13 actually came this season in Bruges. So he ended up playing there more than he did as a centre back this year. Versatility is definitely going to be a benefit to him as a young player trying to break through at Monaco as he can get more opportunities to play if they get any injuries and it should increase the attraction of possible transfers in the future, which, although it's probably going to be a long way down the line, is a big part of the reason I'm picking this player, as I mentioned in the intro. As with any youth prospect, it's pretty difficult to get stats to assess, but with his loan to Bruges this season, I did manage to get at least some data. As you can see, he looks to have had a decent year, although he probably would have liked to see more minutes than the 1400 he got overall. And the season in Belgium's actually been called off now, and the trophy's been awarded to Club Bruges. With 0.9 key passes and one successful dribble per 90 minutes, his attacking contributions at left back looks to have been pretty decent. And then his defensive stats are all above one, which is a good sign. Along with the high number of passes per 90. With a 19 year old playing his first season of senior football, you have to assume that all of those figures are going to improve over the next few seasons. But this is a good base for him to build from. From a profit target analysis, I've stuck to all 19 year old British defenders, with all apart from Ampadu actually being English. So this is a positive for the accuracy of the comparisons. For my comparable purchase options, I went for Steven Sessegnon at Fulham and Zach Medley at Arsenal. All three of these players are working on breaking into the first team at their respective clubs, but I think Sessegnon playing in the championship and getting less minutes than Panzo this season with just under 900, coupled with the fact that Fulham are not guaranteed to get to the Prem next season as they look like they're gonna be in the playoffs assuming the leagues resume and finish. The route to PB football looks a lot more likely for Panzo, and when he gets there, he's going to be playing in a better quality of a team. For Medley, he's only managed three senior appearances for Arsenal in the League Cup so far, so his chances of breaking into the Arsenal team next season are going to be pretty tough, with holding back fit and William Saliba coming over from France. So despite the discount on these two options, I still feel that for the next 12 months, Panzo is going to offer the better potential profit.
For my low target, I went for Jaden Bogle at Derby. Now this is an interesting one, as for a 19 year old, Bogle has had a lot of first team football over the last two seasons. And he's also played in some high pressure games with the championship playoffs last year. As I often find with my low targets, I actually think that Bogle was pretty cheap at just over a pound. And if he managed to get a transfer to a PB league, then he could be a big player next year. His combined goal and assist rate for his career is 0.24 per 90, which although it's at a lower standard, is still very impressive. But as far as a price target for Panzo, I think that as the new season approaches, if it's looking likely he's going to stay at Monaco next year and fight for a place, this would be where I'd expect to see his price around August. For my mid target, I went for Ethan Ampadu on loan from Chelsea at RB Leipzig. Ampadu is actually another player who's probably a little bit undervalued, although he's been rising a little recently. He's had a pretty torrid time out on loan, only featuring 7 times for a total of 277 minutes. Considering he's already got 9 caps for the Wales team, I think he would have been expecting a lot more from the loan. I think to hit this price, Panzo would just need to get a few appearances at Monaco early in the season next year, or get a loan move to another PB League team where it would look likely that he was going to play regularly. Then for my high target, I went for Tariq Lamptey, who's also a Chelsea Academy graduate that left in January to sign for Brighton for just under £3 million. Similar to Bogle, Lamptey has a really solid attacking record in his youth career with 0.26 combined goals and assists per 90, but these have all come at youth level where Bogle has 81 senior appearances so far. So if anything, I think this is a great target for Bogle if he were to get a transfer to the Prem this summer. For Panzo, I think he would need to manage 10 to 15 appearances for Monaco next season, or be playing week in week out at another PV League team to hit this price. But these are both decent possibilities, so this is a good high target to look at for our best case scenario. So that leaves us with a profit target range of 38% for the low, 82% for the mid, and 126% for the high. For this player, although I'm looking for 100% profit in a year, the possibility of a transfer in the future, this could be a player who I keep for 2 or 3 years. If he was to rise 100% to £1.44 by this time next year, having played a few games and showed some promise for Monaco, I would then be looking at potential for transfer links and how that could increase his price. Which with the growth of the market by then might mean we still have a 12 month target price with 100% profit potential. So that's all I've got for you today. Again, if you're interested in some premium memberships to improve your trading, then there's links to Football Index Club, Football Index Edge and to my Patreon page in the description. Thanks for watching and good luck on the index.